Hello, everybody. Um, today we're going to be doing writing piecewise functions from a graph. This is on Delta Math. We're going to be working specifically with Delta Math examples. Um, I have a video already made on a different example, so if you want to check that one out as well, please do so. So let's look at this graph. We have to write the equation for a piecewise. The piecewise has multiple sections. As we can see, this one has two sections. I'm going to go ahead and insert a picture of it into my writing um, station, whatever it's called. So we're going to go ahead and try to write the piecewise for this graph. We are going to start on the left because we always want to write the piecewise from greatest um, to smallest, I mean smallest to greatest, or from left to right. I think that makes more sense. So remember that piecewise notation, um, f of x tells us we got equations and then we have to draw this little symbol. So we have to find the equation of this line. The equation of a line is in y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. Um, so we need to be able to find either the slope, m is our slope, or we also need to be able to find our b, which is the y-intercept. All right. So let's go ahead and look at my line. I'm looking at the first one. If you notice, the line does not cross the y-axis, so I, I can't determine what my y-intercept is, but I can find the slope. In order to find the slope, let's just review real quick. The slope is rise over run. You can do rise over run, or you can use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In other words, just subtract your y's and just subtract your x's. So to be able to find the slope of this example, we need to choose two coordinates. Any two coordinates will do. I'm going to choose negative 6, 4, and I'm going to choose negative 4, 3. All right, so I'm choosing these two points to um, use for my formula. So I'm going to write them down here, negative 6. 4 and negative 4, 3. And I'm going to plug those into my formula. So I'm going to have m equals, it doesn't matter which y comes first as long as you keep the order. So I'm going to say 4 minus 3 because that's my y2 and that's my y1 right there. And then we're going to divide that by our x's. If I started with the coordinate on the left, I have to start with that one again. I had to keep the consistency, so I got negative 6 minus parentheses negative 4. Be careful with that double negative. A lot of students make mistakes with that. And so again, what I'm doing here is trying to find the slope. 4 minus 3 is 1. A negative and a negative give me a positive, so that's going to give me negative 2. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So the slope for this equation is negative 1 half. Another way you could have done that, and this is using the rise over run method, is you could have um, seen how much it rises or how much it goes down. It goes down one, so that's minus one, and then plus two. So you could think of the slope as negative one over two, which is the same thing as negative one half, which is what we did earlier. So you could have done it either way, using the formula or using the rise over run method. Um, so let's continue down here. We know that our m is negative one half. We still don't know what our b is, and we're trying to find the b. So let's plug in a y and an x. Well, one of the y or x's that works is this coordinate right here. This one works because it's part of the line. So I'm going to use negative four comma three and plug it back into my equation to help me find b. You could have chosen any point on that line. I'm just going to choose that one because it's right there. So 3, negative 4, and I'm going to solve. So I have 3 equals a negative times a negative is a positive. Half of 4 is 2 plus b. Again, I'm trying to find my y-intercept. Minus 2, minus 2, 1 equals b. So what's your y-intercept? 1. So my equation is y equals, my slope is negative 1 half x and my y-intercept is 1, like that. Another way you could have found the y-intercept, and this is what I consider the lazy way or the 
graphing visual way is um, you could have continued the slope. So like if you'd like to do rise over run, you go down one, right two. So you could have continued going down one, right two. If you do that, it crosses right at one, giving you the y-intercept at one. So you could have done it that way as well, whichever method works. So we have our equation for the first line, y equals negative one-half x plus one. I'm going to write that in my function notation. You don't put the y in here because f of x already represents y. Remember, it's one whole function put together. So f of x already represents y. So we don't write y equals negative one-half x. We just write negative one-half x plus one. Four, and then this is where our domain goes. We have to find the domain. So let's go ahead and practice finding the domain for this um, equation right here. The domain is on the x-axis. And we want to start from the left. And where does it start? End at the right. Um, now, this is where it can get tricky because it's an arrow. A lot of students have trouble with this. So if you're struggling, don't feel too bad. Um, let's see if we can tackle it together. This arrow represents that the function keeps going. And it keeps going to the left on the x's. So that's negative infinity. I like to think about it like this. We, go, we start at negative infinity. And it's less than, we're talking about domain, so that's our x values. And then let's see where it stops on the right. It stops on the right at negative 2. So we know we're from negative infinity to negative 2. However, at negative 2, we have an open circle. Because we have an open circle, we know that it's just less than and not equal to. An open circle represents just less than. However, we don't need to write this part of the equation or the inequality because it is implied that all the x's are less than negative 2. So that's how we would write it. I like putting the negative infinity there just to keep me, um, give me a start and an ending, but the negative infinity does not need to be part of the answer. We do not write it in this notation. So I'm going to go over here and what's the domain for this problem? It's all the x's less than negative 2. And notice it's not equal to because it was an open circle. All right. So go ahead and try to find the equation for the next segment. Here's the next segment. You want to start with y equals mx plus b. And you want to find the slope and the y-intercept. Pause the video and try it. All right. So I'm hoping that by now you guys pause the video and try to do that one. So I'm going to write m equals. And I'm going to choose two points on here. I'm going to choose this point. It's still part of the line, even though it's technically not included. It's still going to help me find the um, equation of that line. So I'm going to use the point 5, negative 2. And I'm going to use this point right here, 6, comma, 0. And I'm going to find the slope. So I'm going to start with negative 2 minus 0. That's some of the changes in y. And then I'm going to do my changes in x, 5 minus 6, like that. And I'm going to solve. Negative uh, 2 minus 0 is negative 2. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So my slope turns out to be a negative and a negative is a positive. 2 divided by 1 is 2. So my slope is 2. So I know that the slope of that line is 2. You did not have to do it that way. You could have also done rise over run. Again, I love rise over run. Just going to say it. I'm going up 2, right 1, plus 2 plus 1. So again, it gives me the exact same thing um, doing it rise over run method. I just wanted to show you guys that. So we're going to plug it, our information into this equation. So we got m equals 2. And I'm going to use a coordinate. Any coordinate works. I'm going to use 6, 0 just because I like working with 0. Sometimes it makes my life easier. We'll see if it makes my life easier in this one. Um, our y is 0. Again, I'm using that point. My slope, we said, was 2. And my x is 6. And we're trying to find the y-intercept. So we got 0 equals 12 plus b. Subtract the 12 on both sides because I'm solving for b. So I'm getting rid of that. We got negative 12 equals b. So what's my b? Negative 12. Another way you could have done that, and this is, again, the lazy way, that I like to call it, is you could have continued the um, slope 
going down one, right two, down one, oops, not down one, left one, down two, left one, down two, left one, down two, and then you would have um, ran out of space. So notice that that doesn't always work unless you kind of have a good sense of what the graph looks like. You could have found the y-intercept that way. <clears throat> so those were two different ways you could have done that. So my equation is y equals, we found the slope to be two, and the y-intercept to be negative 12. So that's the equation for that line right there. So I'm gonna plug that up here. I'm gonna say 2x plus, oh, minus 12, minus 12. Four, and now we gotta find the domain one more time. Um, so the domain, let's look back at my line. Let's look back at my line. Let me erase some of this stuff. My domain starts from the left. And where does it end on the right? So if I look on the left, it starts at five. So we're gonna start at five. And it is an open circle, so that's less than. It's never gonna be greater than because you don't read it backwards. You don't read it from greatest to smallest. So it's always less than. And then we're talking about domain, so we're gonna put an X there. We have this arrow. The arrow tells us we go to infinity. So technically, it's from five to infinity, but we don't have to write that infinity because it is implied all x's are greater than five. It is implied that it goes to infinity. So what would you write on this side? Five is less than x. Um, I know sometimes you have to switch it. Those two are the same. Delta math takes both of those. But notice that if the x is on the left, I did flip the inequality symbol. So either one of those works. I like to keep the order five is less than x. So that's how you would um, write the equation for that piecewise. So let me go ahead and show you how to type that into um, delta math. So we said it was, um, I forgot already, negative one half, negative one half. Move the x over by pressing the right arrow key, plus one, four, x is, whoops, or x is less than negative two. And then let me type my second equation. We found it to be two x minus 12 for five is less than x like that. And so we submit our answer. Bam, there we go. I hope these videos help you guys um, solve it. If not, shoot me an email and I can help you. Have a good day, bye-bye.